So across Thailand, people live on different budgets. Today I'm talking with a couple from Canada. And we're going to see what the detailed costs of living are. From their rent, to their bills, to any other expenses that they incur living here. What is their plan and how are they actually staying here in Thailand? We want these vlogs to be an inspiration to people that want to live here and give you an idea of what kind of lifestyle you can expect from what kind of budget. So let's talk with Bren and Laurel and get all of the details for you. Thanks for joining us on this vlog today. Let's get cozy. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Laurel, yeah. Brendan, mm -hmm. come to see you yes. on your farm. Thank, uh, thank you. you for inviting me over. Um, I'm shooting a series at the moment, as everybody knows, about different lifestyles in Thailand, different lives, people living different lives. Uh, some are in the city, some are in factories, working in factories and, and doing big projects. Some are living in the rural areas. And, and I'm interested to know what is the lifestyle like and what are the costs of living? And the reason I ask this is because many of my subscribers have a dream but don't believe maybe they could do it um, on their budgets. And I want to put across the message that you don't actually have to be a millionaire to live in Thailand. People live on different budgets. Um, people exist in different ways and they can find happy and meaningful lives regardless of, of the budget. And I kind of like, I don't actually know your guys' budget at all. <laughs> uh, we're going to discuss that now. But um, I think it's going to be interesting insight to show you different people living different lives on different budgets. So Laurel and Brendan have agreed to have a chat with me about mm -hmm. that. This is their beautiful home, which you're going to see through the uh, process of this interview. And let's start, I think, with where you're from and how did you get here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're from Canada and um, we took, about two years ago, we decided that we wanted to change our lives. Um, we were working pretty intense jobs, working a lot and just were not happy in any way. Um, and we knew we wanted to live alternatively. So we had a dream to one day create some sort of sanctuary, some sort of like off-grid, beautiful space where it, it would be like a retreat center for people and mm. um, live in, in community as well and just enjoy like the simpler things in life. So we, we took the leap, we decided we were going to volunteer at farms because we had no skills. Mm -hmm. No skills of farming whatsoever. Yeah. We were office workers. Yeah, we had, we, we, had the, we had the dream of like having this lifestyle or feeling like that was what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. We were like, okay, I think we need to do it first and get some experience. Um, because yeah, in Canada I worked as a nurse um, and Brendan was a project manager. So just completely different fields and a uh, set of skills that you use. To farming. To, yeah, 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 to be farming, yeah. to be trying to live in nature, be off-grid or anything, mm -hmm. so. We're located in between, like, Chiang Mai is the main city, mm -hmm. and Pai, right? Yeah. Yeah, somewhere in between. There. Somewhere yeah. in between, yeah. right? Close oh. to Maitang, yeah. Maitang, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maitang area. And this place that you're living in, you've given me the tour. Um, can you tell us a little bit about it? How did you find it? And and what is your deal here? Did you build it or do you rent it? What's, what's the deal? Uh, we met a lady who is also from Canada and she was visiting from Singapore. And we told her that, yeah, we just like loved it here. We were wanting to stay longer. And she just told us like, oh, you should come and see my house. Literally five minutes away. And maybe you want to rent my house. And she was really excited because nobody had been living in this house for the past three years and she wanted a house to be taken care of and she was like people should live in homes yeah. homes mm -hmm. shouldn't be empty was the, kind of the true. jungle also takes over your home very quickly in thailand yeah right? like if you leave it unkept other things start living in it yeah mm -hmm, so. yeah so um so we went and saw the house and it was really great and she wanted to rent it for like a very very low price uh just to have somebody here and initially we didn't take her up on it because we were like, oh, we kind of just want to like be in the community that we were volunteering in initially. Um, but then as time went on, we just kept on thinking, if we don't rent that house, I think we're going to kick ourselves for not taking that opportunity because she also has two and a half like rye as a part of this land that she just gave us permission to do whatever we wanted mm -hmm. with. And so she was like, build gardens, build a brewery, have a bakery, <laughs> like just literally do whatever you want. And yeah, we just felt like, 
I think this could be a really good place for us to really experience what it's like to live here because we were still exploring, yeah, what does it mean to live in Thailand? What does that look like? How does that feel? And yeah, it was just... How long have you been here in this house? That was September of last year. Okay. So coming up on a year. year. Yeah. So your first year in it. And how are you feeling about it? Do you feel isolated at all here? Or actually, do you find it quite comfortable as a couple together, do you get under each other's um, feet sometimes? <laughs> like when you're isolated together. Like, I live in a very remote and rural area yeah. with, mm. with my wife, and we have certain separation mm. in that I sleep separately, and mm. you know we have our own spaces on the farm, and mm. we come together as well. Yeah. Mm. There's a relationship dynamic, and then there's the practical elements. How is it working for you? Mm. I think this place is probably great for us because we have a community so close by that we can, we have friends and we have, you know, a family that, that feels like when we want to be social, we, we can go there and be social, but mm-hmm. we also have the separation to kind of isolate ourselves and, and do what we like to do and work on the skills that we want to work on. Mm-hmm. Um, because, which, yeah, because it's kind of the dynamic between before we came here, living in a community is like very full on mm-hmm. all social time. all the time. You're with people all the time. You're eating every meal together. You're cooking together. You're gardening together. You're going places together. And so I think for both of us being like a little bit more on the introverted side, I think I'm more extroverted than Brendan, but um, I think it was attractive to us. Like initially they were like, oh, having our own space like would be really nice but this community is still so close Mm -hmm. um and even this morning like we had people come over and just visit us for a bit and like we've shared our limes with them and we harvested a bunch of bamboo and so there's like really nice things about having both of those things together but i think it can be kind of isolating if we're not uh, if we're not actively like choosing to socialize in yes. that way. Yeah, we have re- we're very much like at the end of the road here, so there's only like the village that's five minutes away. You mean li- literally? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Not like we're at a- No, like <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. the national park is there and this is as far as you can go this uh-huh. way, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so, do, you, yeah. do you feel it's made you stronger as a couple? Definitely, we work through a lot every day because we're together. <laughs> Things that you wouldn't even yeah, expect, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, we're together twenty four seven. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's healthy in some ways, and I think we're finding ways to like create that separation a bit more in our lives. But because mm. you're also talking about two rooms, yes. There's yeah, this room and upstairs, right. yes, and upstairs yeah. is boiling hot during the day. <laughs> so, so one room, it's yeah. One so room. it's this room and then Sleep. outside, <laughs> or yeah. And we're yeah. talking like 500 square meters or something, yeah. or something like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I think it's just interesting. People often have a dream about coming live in rural, maybe as a couple. Um, and it can be, it, there can be that isolating aspect too. That can be challenging mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. So um, about like the, the way you live, obviously these kind of properties don't come up everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, what would you say is the range of the rent for something like this? And if people could find it, mm-hmm. you know? Hmm. I don't know in terms of like what would be around here, the average price, but we pay 6,000 baht per month for this place, which is all utilities included. And there's actually a, a, a lovely couple that come and take care of the grass and cut the grass as well for us. Yeah. Oh, right. So well, I noticed on the drive in that all of the driveway was yeah, yeah. clear. Yeah, yeah, which they literally, it's funny that you came today because the grass was very tall, like in these fields yesterday, uh, but they came and cut it yesterday. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so that's like huge because it's a crazy amount of time and work uh, to cut all of the grass. And we've taken more or less like two of the rice patties to like garden and whatnot and so that used to just be more field that they needed to cut the grass for but even so there's still Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i mean we really walked into like the best deal possible yeah Mm -hmm. i think you could probably rent a house in a village like this for around the same amount but you wouldn't have the perks of someone cutting your grass or the Mm -hmm. electricity and everything else included so do you don't pay the utility no no No. that's included in the six thousand that's a really good deal yeah that's a super good yeah. deal. Yeah, which yeah. I never really thought about before because I thought we Maybe don't have aircon. I think it's, it's between just... five hundred and fifteen hundred. Well, it's yeah. 
it's good. I mean, the realistic reflection of cost of living on you is actually just the 6,000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not covering it. Yeah. Um, and then your water, you have an interesting setup for the water, one mm-hmm. that I've never even researched, to be honest. Um, what, what is your water costs every month? Zero, absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it may cost a bit in electricity, because we, but we don't pay that. But we use a well to pump to a water tower, which takes care of all the showers and stuff like that. And then we take that water and run it through a filter that we've made, and that provides us our drinking water. Yeah, when we first moved in, we had somebody help us fill it with biochar that we washed and cleaned, and then with a layer of rocks that we also washed and cleaned, and then sand. And so pouring it through and we let it sit, usually overnight, just like to give it the most amount of time. And then, yeah, and then we have drinking water so then we don't. And this water is pumped from the ground here? Yeah, from the well. Did you ever test it or? I never tested um, it, but yeah. John John Dai tested this method at Meijo University and Perfect. they said better than, than any water they've seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your tea is made from this water. <laughs> Boiled. Yeah, it's also boiled. <laughs> so if this trip gets cancelled early, um, it was these guys. Oh, if you never see me again, I don't know. I'd be, I'd be buried in the rice fields near the house. That's gravel on top, is it? Yeah, yeah. So you have the charcoal first, then the sand, then the gravel. Yep. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you, this, the savings, you yeah. must, be, must be saving at least 40 baht a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just like, it's easier. Like, it's a it's lot easier just, than can carrying those it. big tanks. Yeah. You know, I, we've got to carry those big tanks every week. I've got to go out and get six big tanks of water, oh, yeah. pick them up, bring them in. And then there's the petrol cost. Mm-hmm. So it's not yeah. just the 40 baht, mm-hmm. like the petrol cost to go and pick it up. And yeah. you're more rural too. Yeah. So it's even more difficult. Huh? Yeah, which I know that we could do it. Like that's what everybody else in the village does. Um, but yeah, we were just like, this is what people in the community, like the organic farming community are doing, like, let's just do it. Do it. And so just before we find out Bren and Laurel's cost of living here and how it is they actually afford to stay here, just want to mention our partners for this vlog, which is Surfshark. Many of you know and have downloaded Surfshark already. Surfshark is a VPN that will protect your privacy online when you're browsing. But not only that, it also gives you access to Netflix libraries worldwide. So if you're bored of the content available to you on your Netflix, you can change your country up here in the top right corner and you have access to all new libraries and content. Also, Netflix is gonna protect you from price discrimination. So sometimes when we search from one location, prices are different to if we search from another location change your location up and see if there's any difference in price and it could lead to big savings for you so they've given me a code to give to you it's bamboo it's going to get you three months three and a exclusive surfshark discount you can click the link in the description head over there and if you're in the market for a vpn please do use that code it's probably the best deal you're going to find anywhere around so let's get back to the vlog and then in terms of like food um do you go to the supermarkets do you go to the markets what, what is your monthly spend on food and what are your diets like? Are you, do you have following any particular diet or? Uh, we eat mostly an animal-based diet. Um, most of our budget is actually spent on food mm-hmm. and we order um, like free-range chicken breasts and other sorts of like grass-fed beef and stuff like that and then buy local eggs and milk at the store. Mm-hmm. Um, so our total food cost every month, our budget at least, is 11,000 baht. 11,000, and it's the meat that's the expensive thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's the yeah. chicken, it's, and especially if you're having beef. Yeah, it's yeah. like 70% of that. Which that we, sure. yeah, and we wanted to buy, like, I think if we were just buying chicken from, like, Lotus or whatnot, it would be less expensive. Much, much less expensive. For sure, but we have chosen to buy our, like, all of our meat products from, a, like, organic farm in Chiang Rai, mm-hmm. and so we order like their chicken and their beef and products from them every month and so yeah that ends up being a lot more expensive than what we could Mm -hmm. be doing in terms of our diet but yeah i think before we adopted that diet i don't know what our food costs were they were significantly less like almost felt i mean rice and eggs is pretty cheap and yeah um yeah, the vegetables at the market are pretty negligible as well if that's what you're eating mostly. Mm-hmm. And even just eating out every day is, you know, kind of cheap in Thailand. We have a wonderful restaurant that dishes are like 40 to 50 baht still. So mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you eat out a lot here? Or? 
Not at all, really. <laughs> we really don't. Um, I think just because it is so rural and we feel like we we really wanted to kind of take more control over our diet. Mm -hmm. And though even though the food can be like really cheap and really delicious, um, I think both of us and especially for Bren was finding that he really wanted to like clean out his diet and just like literally eating very plain, very simply and finding that that has made like a really big difference in just how you mm -hmm. feel every day. And then so insurance every month, mm -hmm. uh, if you pay it yearly, usually it's about 15,000 baht. Yeah, something mm -hmm. would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty negligible. And is there any other costs that you know, like visa costs? I guess they also come yearly. Mm -hmm. Yes. For you. Yeah. 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 So we're on the smart visa in Thailand. Oh really? And so that is, we were initially on a six month smart visa, and this past May we extended it to a two year visa. And so each year is 10,000 baht for each of us each. on that visa. You're the first people I've met on a smart visa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, not it's very not, common. It's yeah. not easy to get. Yeah. We thought it, it was. That's yeah. why we went for it. <laughs> yeah. And what did you have to prove in order to do that? Um, we had to create a business in Thailand. Yeah. And we had to... And part of that business was developing an app related to that business but okay. the initial is just having the idea for your business and the idea for the app so we didn't have to already have built the app mm -hmm. to get the visa but if we want to extend it at that two-year mark we will have to show progress in can you that. issue a work permit from the smart visa or not it <laughs> is we're it is like a work permit, yeah. but you don't have a work permit. It's kind of mm -hmm. strange. So I don't think you could go work for somebody else without it, but you can work on your own business without it. Yeah. So we have some kind of document that says that we are work permit exempt. We're saying we don't <laughs> yeah, and they're like, I've permit. never seen this before. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen this before? Yeah. So yeah. Is there any capital requirements? To show, to prove? Uh, yes, I yeah. think it's 600,000 baht in a bank account that has Holy your name on it. With your name yeah, on it. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be a Thai bank account. It can be your Canadian international bank account. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. just yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 And so is there any other costs that you can think of that, that I've not asked about, like unbudgeted costs? Uh, you have no kids, like kids are a cost for me. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. Days yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. We just have stuff. two cats. Yeah. Cost they don't cost too much. 130 yeah. baht for cat food. Yeah. Or <laughs> so, so what you're really saying is, what I'm hearing is your budget is actually under 20,000 baht a month? Our budget is 25,000 baht a month. So mm -hmm. we have a certain amount in a, like a free spending account. And okay. that's for us to use to buy materials, tools, like it costs money to do these things so Lazada uh, yeah exactly <laughs> things, like yeah, that. Yeah. things we need for filming and, and whatnot yeah. so I think uh, gas was oh yeah, something yeah, petrol, yeah, yeah that sure. you know to we have a car that we take if we want to go to Chiang Mai on like a little bit of like a longer drive uh then I think what do we have like seventeen hundred baht or fifteen hundred baht we spend on yeah. gas every month? Okay, or around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that kind of takes you to your average spending of twenty five thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With all the bits that you buy. Right. And, yeah. And the petrol, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah. and then for for you guys in terms of like income, did you save beforehand? Like, are you are you plumbing through savings or do you earn as well? Mm -hmm. Your app. Plummeting yeah. through savings. Plummeting through savings. <laughs> That's a good Yeah, yeah. We, we, worked, <laughs> we worked for five years pretty much nonstop and saved up a lot of money. And instead of like buying a house and going through the traditional sort of path of life that mm -hmm. the Western society wants you to take, we just mm -hmm. decided let's go learn and like put ourselves in the position to learn all the skills that we want to learn mm -hmm. that we can take forward and maybe make money on. Someday in the Down future. the line. Yeah. 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 I, I often find things happen mm -hmm. in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things happen that you don't expect. You meet people that you don't expect. And, and things kind of... I, I never expected to be in five-star hospitality, but mm -hmm. I ended up there. Mm -hmm. I had a jazz lounge, and that just came about, you know. Mm -hmm. Things transpire. And, and the more the your savings get down to the zero, they transpire faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe because you push them in that direction. Yeah, yeah. It can yeah. be easy to become quite lazy mm. and complacent when the mm. savings are full. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got time. Yeah. yeah totally. how, how, how much time do you think you have? Like, do you see this as, do you plan to be in this place for five years, 10 years? Or are you mm. looking at the next 12 months? Or do you not know? You're just taking it day by day. 
I think, yeah, mostly taking it as, as it comes, but I think our, our original plan when we got in this house is we want to spend a year and then see where it goes, if we want to stay, if mm -hmm. there's somewhere else that's calling us, but I think we're, we want to enjoy the nice weather of the winter coming, so <laughs> yeah. we're at least going to be here for that, and then, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I think when we first came here, uh, we had a very wise farmer friend tell us, mm. you have to spend a year to right. really know what a place is like. And like you were saying before, like getting over that, getting through that honeymoon phase and then seeing like, okay, how do I actually feel? Mm -hmm. How are things, yeah, just as that time transpires mm -hmm. and what changes within you, how the environment or things change uh, over that time. And so I think we told ourselves, we need to spend at least a year. And when we got our visa in May, that's kind of when we initially said that. I think before then, we were just, all right, whatever. Like, mm -hmm. we're just seeing how things are. Mm -hmm. And then as time went on, we felt like, okay, we have this visa. And at the one-year mark, we need to do something about it. I forget what. But uh, we need to do something about our visa and probably make a little bit of a decision of like, okay, we're going to spend the other half of this visa here or make a change or whatnot so yeah I think that was where our minds were at and where we're feeling now and I think we are past that honeymoon phase now <laughs> that we're like experienced um you know all of the seasons in Thailand now and, and you start to feel the seasons isn't it in the mm -hmm. first year you don't really know but as the years go on it, it, you really become attuned to these seasons like yeah we're in the blooming hot season again yeah, like, yeah. And when i'm in that i like i gotta make it through yeah. i just gotta make it through this like put the air conditioning in yeah, yeah, yeah. um and then the cold season oh nice and snuggly yeah, under the yeah. under the duvet I, I learned this year during hot season that my brain shuts off at about 37 degrees Celsius. oh yeah so yeah anything after that I'm just on the floor. That's coma territory. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, that's not a very productive time. Have you had any moments of thinking, right, we're going back to Canada right now? I think many. Yeah. <laughs> like, to Every be day. honest. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Some days more than others. Some yeah. days more than others, for sure. I think, yeah, you can feel, after you've been in a certain lifestyle, I think it's easy to forget what your life was like before mm -hmm. and I think for me especially like I have a big family back in Canada and I have nephews and just my parents and siblings that I find myself missing or wanting to be a part of their mm -hmm. lives more um, but then you realize that you're kind of looking at it a little bit through rose tinted glasses you're like oh was it really just like I just had all of this time with my family and whatnot? <laughs> no. Yeah. No, so I was like working. like five minutes. Yeah. yeah, I was working most of the time, like yeah. in a very stressful job and environment. But yeah, I think... I, I think the price of freedom, the price of freedom, the emancipation from what you know and the price of novelty to go into new things, mm. that's the price you pay. It's, mm -hmm. it's what you're accustomed to. Yeah. And if you stay with what you're accustomed to, the mm. price you pay is the freedom and the novelty. Yeah. Yeah. So what is yin and yang? Yeah. One way or the other, what are you going to do? Like, mm -hmm. I know some folks spend six months in, six months out. Um, but then especially as a younger couple, you, your direction in life is kind mm. of important. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you see kids here? Mm -hmm. Do you see like a long-term future here? Mm -hmm. That's that's the difficult question yeah. when you're yeah. younger. I think when you're retired, it's like kids have grown up and gone yeah. And, yeah. And, and whatever. You know, if you want kids, you may not even want mm. kids, but do you see a, a long-term life together? Mm -hmm. When you're retired, kids are gone. It's okay, you can just commit yeah. Yeah. to being here and live yeah. out your retirement and knowing that you've got an income coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, younger, younger people, were at the start of their life where mm -hmm. you, you need to make something, right? Yeah. yeah. Create that app. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and totally. yeah, like we have, our, we have our channel that we work on, but ultimately... Yeah, we don't have a ton of direction in terms of building something for ourselves in the future other than increasing our skills and mm -hmm. our knowledge. And we're hoping something naturally comes out of that. Mm -hmm. And what, what is your channel called? Your YouTube channel where people can find you? Yeah, our channel is called The Pilgrim's Process uh, with Brent and Laurel. So, with Brent and Laurel, yeah. right? Yeah. We used to just be Brent and Laurel, but we've made a, a bit of a shift. A bit of a shift, yeah. changed yeah. it up. I'll put the link in the description anyway so you guys can follow along with the mm -hmm. journey. Um, I guess we'll we'll finish up with like let's let's see it from a, a younger couple's perspective. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for like a younger couple that was thinking about coming 
living out in in Thailand? What would your mm-hmm. advice be, Laurel? Oh, well, I was like, Brent should take this question. Well, you can both. I'm going to ask you both. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, I would just say do it and just mm-hmm. be open to the the experiences and yeah, like just coming with an open heart. I think that's what not Thai too people, many expectations. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, right. and I think Thai people have like taught me that so much. They're such an open hearted people that. It just makes me want to open my heart more as well. And I think, yeah, just things change when you open yourself up to the unexpected. And like you said as well, of like things just happen and you don't even know. This house and this place just happens, just happens. to us. Yeah. And it's completely unplanned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the universe. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Brent, for a young, yeah. young couple or young people? I mean, that, that was great. Um, I would also say the same, just do it, but I think I would also say if you're planning on coming to Thailand for a while, get to know the locals and the culture and really mix yourself in with that group, not just the expats, because mm-hmm. the expats might they might make you feel more comfortable and having those luxuries might make you feel better about your decision, but I think having a local connection and friends and people that you love and know, yeah. that's what's going to keep you here. Yeah, mm-hmm. because yeah. the expat community will always change, but the locals, like, yeah, we we have so many friends close by, and that's that's what keeps us here. Stay away mm-hmm. from the grumpy expats. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks a lot for chatting with me today mm-hmm. and inviting mm-hmm. me to your place. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, and you have to check these guys out. Uh, the Pilgrim Process. Mm-hmm. So, link in the description. And thanks for watching uh, this vlog with us today, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. But now you're gone